meditation master would say, you suffer out of all thoughts. Isn't that true? Again, six of those here is a good example. He <laughs> <laughs> said, oh, we lost for sure. <laughs> Nothing left, but I, I had in the back of my mind, you have the chance. He said, so why this far? <laughs> there must be a reason. <laughs> Cause and effect. Okay, that's what uh, Buddhism is all about. So, um, because uh, we didn't know that, that's what the Buddha said. Because we never heard of it, that's why there's no insight meditation. But now you heard it, you know, to the, the burden fall on you. What are you gonna do with it next? You know, like. Uh, he gave us uh, the way to catch your thoughts, see how to get rid of your suffering. It was the practical technique called the Four Foundations of Mindfulness, which deal with uh, self-monitoring, self-observation of your body, your feeling, your mind, and mental phenomena, like things you encounter through your eyes, your nose, tongue, body, and now it's your thoughts. So the four aspects of life, body, feeling, we live our feeling, right? Winning, losing, you know, <laughs> happiness and happiness, comfort, discomfort, a neutral feeling. Body, you know, we keep changing all the time, we have to keep maintaining. My is the worst thing, we run around like a little monkey, you know? <laughs> see that two nights ago. <laughs> so I hear it a lot. And then, uh, so the best way is to get distracted. I was looking through it. Oh, there was a video that I went to a trip in South Africa. So I take my mind out of it. So we know lose doesn't matter. <laughs> so you take away from the, what you indulging with in the thoughts. Take away from the thoughts. And, then, and my, that's the my how it works. Mental phenomena is what we see through the eye, you know, somebody in mind. The side you saw, the game, and so on. So, um, this is what the basic uh, teaching of the four foundations of mind. Most of them concentrated on the body. So, the Buddha <laughs> describes six techniques in there, like mindfulness of breathing, which you probably learned to do that a lot already. But in, in there, the, the true essence has 16 steps, which go through the body, feeling my mental phenomena. So you have to read through the Anapanasi Sutra, mindfulness with breathing, to get the detail, not just breathing in and out. That's not the whole, that's not fair to, to give it like mindfulness with breathing, that's not it. That's just concentration meditation. So there are two types of meditation I wanna address. Uh, concentration meditation, which you focus on one thing. Suppose you focus on the Buddha image. By the way, this is a Theravada. Buddhist statue, the only one the only here one today, <laughs> because they couldn't borrow. I, I tried to put it in to the museum, it's not old enough, for the 60s young years, so <laughs> they didn't even look at it. <laughs> so <laughs> it's just a thought, it's a Thai style. <laughs> and, uh, okay, so that's my finish this reading. And there are different things, like four major postures, which we will do today. Walking, standing, sitting, laying down, go to bed, you know, we're not gonna do that today. You can do that at home, I'll teach you how. Same way as when you stand or when you sit. And then there are uh, other technique about the subtle movement. Those are four major, walking, standing, sitting, laying down. Subtle movement just as like you're blinking, swallowing, I give you a chance for the Buddha's side in the feet there. You, you should be aware, you don't have to read that. I'll just walk you through <laughs> and memorize that. <laughs> 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 you should be aware of yourself while you are stepping forward or backward. Why do you do that? When you're in a tight corner in your bed, uh, in your bathroom, you know, like, you don't want to hit by the, you go to the airport, you can see that. <laughs> you don't want to be hit by the, the door <laughs> and hit the, that bowl <laughs> at the same time because they give very little room. So you be aware of yourself when you step forward or backward, looking ahead or sideways, stretching or bending, which we'll be doing today. 
Um, and then getting dressed, you know, like in the morning, you get dressed or at night. And uh, when, when you walk, uh, when, I'm sorry, <coughs> when you eat, when you drink, when you chew food, um, or when you swallow, you'll be aware of it. Or when you taste food, John Kabat Zinn, some of you may have learned. His, his technique, he gives you one, one piece of uh, raisin and you chew on it and taste it. That's part of it, the subtle movement. And you wear it when you urinate, defecate. Oh, you get a little more detail than you, you want, but that's what you need to do <laughs> in your daily living. That's what the Buddha side example. And when you wear, when you walk, when you stand, when you sit, when you go to bed, when you fall asleep, when you wake up, when you talk, or when you remain silent, which is harder when you remain silent. You may have curiosity <laughs> while he's doing this or that and so on. So this is an example he cites, which is more detailed. And, and the applied technique, is simplified technique, is what we're going to do uh, with the dynamic meditation. So what's the insight in there? Uh, it let you to see yourself um, experience internally and externally. Before we go to that, we, we kind of go through other system too, like in the, in the body, he was talking about uh, the four major elements, categorize different parts of your body. Like some of them are solid, like your skin, your nail, your scalp hair, your bone, your, and uh, these are the solid part called earth. And then the wind is like the gas, like the gas in your stomach, or when you pass gas, <laughs> when you breathe, that's the air, the gas. Water is like your liquid, uh, like your tears, your sweat, your blood, and so on, the urine. And then uh, fire is your metabolism. So you let them see, categorize into four major elements. And then there are 32 minor elements. He kind of parts of the body. He kind of uh, analytical, the other one is categorize now in more detail that the different parts of your body, like your, your skin, your nails, your teeth, um, scalp hair, bodily hair, your liver, spleen, bone marrow, muscles, lung, heart, and so on. That's been described, 32 organs, 32 parts, just to see the ugliness that you have to keep maintaining. Like you have to wash your hair, wash your face, shampoo your hair, take a shower every day, otherwise no one wants to come and sit next to you. You have to brush your teeth, otherwise they don't want to talk to you. <laughs> and uh, so this thing that you have to maintain. And then finally, the sixth one, he said, the nine channel state, what happened after you die. So in India, it's prevalent. You can go to the Ganges River, you can see cops boarding. You don't have to appoint, you don't need appointment. You can go there. <laughs> And early in the morning, I went there, I saw three cops floating. And they were like burning, cremating at the guard in the river band. Some, uh, some are poor, they don't have enough to buy a lot of fuel. Half burned, they just kicked it down the river, you know? So you can see cops, what happened after you die, I see that you kind of get swollen and green and oozing out, and then later on, animal tear out, you know, like, the blood everywhere, and uh, pus and uh, skin and bone tear apart, and uh, the fleshy parts still hold on, later on become just bone scattering, and then it's powerized bone. So there's nothing left. You can't see it, what happened to you, so you have to go and look for it, what will happen to you after you die. So this are the six uh, things that we mentioned, the way to, to practice on your body. So the, we're going to concentrate on the third one, which is about cell awareness technique for subtle movement. So um, the, it's been revived, the ancient technique revived by the labor of a Lopatian, the disciple. He was illiterate in the Thai language. He know a little bit of Lao and the Lai, it's a not, not Eastern Thai language. He know the local language. He cannot read or write. He had to learn it after he know the truth. Even he can't even communicate with the 
you know, people in the capital because they, they couldn't understand his the local, you know, like dialect that well because certain words you get stuck there. You have to relearn them to communicate with people. But yet, you're illiterate, but you can learn the truth. So it's the Dharma language. You don't need the, the conceptual language. That's what you can, you probably don't know Thai. You might say a Thai word, you probably won't understand, you won't understand at all. Okay. So some words you may understand, like Thai. <laughs> <laughs> but other words you probably don't know. <laughs> so, uh, so, so it's, it's, it doesn't depend on concept at all. You can just go ahead and look into your heart and mind and you come to see the thing, the truth of life. So what is, this is called Dharma, the truth of life, the truth of nature, secret of nature, the norm of the universe. So when you encounter it, you come to see it. Uh, so it's called Dharma. The Dharma itself defines a translation because the, uh, the truth, the ultimate truth, don't put the end of the dynamic meditation master said, is the ultimate of nature, not just nature, ultimate of nature. I mean, it it's, it's consists of the four noble truths, the four ultimate truths, as a literal meaning. Suffering, cause of suffering, end of suffering, middle path to end suffering. Cause of suffering, uh, is the second noble truth. It's because of your craving, your desire, sensual desire, liking or disliking. That's what we see in two or six things in the world series. <laughs> and then you have the consequence of that is suffering. Because your mind reaching out with that's the cause of suffering. That's what that's a yellow page thing. Reach out and touch someone. You are already in the suffering, <laughs> the cause of suffering, because you long to someone to call them. You know, your heart is there. You're not seeing yourself. So the end of suffering is a result of your mind seeing your mind clearly. It's a middle path, unbiased. Seeing your mind clearly. My seeing mind. What does the mind look like? Mind is formless, travel incorporeal, the Buddha said. Travel afar in the thoughts. It resides in this cave. It is passive by your body. Anyone that can control one's mind to free from free yourself from Mara. Mara is the demon, devil. In your mind, it's also a demon. You can free yourself from suffering that way. So how can you see your mind <coughs> clearly? And then my see your mind clearly, consequences you are the ultimate peace and happiness. So how can you see it when it's formless, incorporeal, solitary, travel afar? That's the definition the Buddha gave. It's basically, it leaves a trace behind the mind is formless. It leaves a trace as feeling, perception, and thought formation. So these are things that, like, you can track your mind on. That's what we observe on the feeling, like immediate feeling, the fresh feeling, which walk you through, okay, and then uh, it lets you see your mind immediately from this fresh feeling through self-awareness, mindful awareness. When you embed mindfulness in the movement, you gain self-awareness, or conscious awareness right away. That's the consequence. So um, we can try that first. How about open and close your fist? It's a fresh feeling. Normally we rub ourselves. We, we rarely do that, but we long for a hug from somebody else. You never, you forget yourself. <laughs> no harm in touching yourself. Don't think of the other way. Okay. <laughs> 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 you, you want? To <laughs> okay. Circle your fingers. Circle your thumb and your your index finger. So that's self-aware, immediate, very fresh, 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 fleshy feeling. Try ten digits, see it. Lightly, it's very sharp. Huh? That's self-awareness. We all have that. How come we neglect it? We never pay attention to it. So this is the 
And this is the largest organ of your body. Your eyes are so small, but it's so sneaky. They look very far, <laughs> sometimes half a mile away <laughs> on the road, you see that. In your ego, you can look two miles away or something like that. But you can look so far. And uh, your ear is even worse, too. Sometimes you hear across the room, there's noise coming in. <laughs> you can't even see it. And your, your, your tongue, you like to taste, and so on. So, but this is the largest organ, 1.73 square meters. That's what we learn in medical school. And when you calculate for medication doses, 1.73 square meters. That's the largest sensory organ of your body. Then how come we neglect it? So today we're going to wake it up. Okay. <laughs> so let's do that. So uh, the technique is uh, uh, rhythmic dynamic meditation. It's an inside technique. Uh, I talk about tranquility. Tranquility, uh, you focus on one thing. You only absorb in one thing. Like you see the Buddha image, you're in the Buddha image. And you only know Buddha image, period. You can enjoy Buddha image. So what? Francesca said, that's the whole thing. You need to absorb it <laughs> and learn it. But to gain insight in it, right? Insight is uh, to be in one thing, but you, but you look around open yourself to the world, to your body, your feeling, your mind, mental phenomena. You expose yourself everywhere, but by being anchored of your body, like this dynamic meditation movement, or you move more your breath. Everything is dynamic. Don't get it wrong. Even when you do mindfulness with breathing, because your breath is going in and out. You observe the movement of breath, see the nature of your breath, Say at one spot, like your nostril, you observe the changing nature of it. You know, not just say when you're absorbing the breath itself, then you only gain tranquility meditation. But you just see the breath and see other things. Anchor your breath to see everything around you in your body, feeling, mind. And you gain insight. It's the difference of inside meditation. You anchor at one thing, but you see millions of things around you, but your mind is not wandering around. Your mind here anchored here in your body. So the technique is called rhythmic dynamic meditation. So use your hand. It's like walking meditation with your hand, with your palms on your side. <coughs> Feel your right palm up if you're aware. Bring it up if you're aware. Down to your tummy if you're aware. Left palm. Good. Bring it up if you're aware. Down to your tummy if you're aware. Slide your right palm up, bring it out, bring it down, turn it down, left palm, bring it out, turn it down. Keep on doing that. That's one cycle. Don't have to count. There are 14 steps, but don't count it. But you're in concept, a position. You don't need that. Just simply know the movement. You do it with your eye open, okay? So you can apply this in your daily living. If you miss it, just retry it. Nothing wrong with that. It has no meaning. It's a way to fool your mind to be at yourself now. To fool you all day long. Now you want to fool it to be with yourself. So embed your mindfulness at the movement. You gain self-awareness. It's like when you circle your fingers. You acknowledge the movement. Right? You acknowledge it. How do you know it? You know with your mind, obviously. That's how you, this is the insight of doing this. You do it at your own pace. You keep on doing it. I'm talking, I keep doing it with you too. So you can look down for in the front, about two meters away, one, or two feet away, one meter away. And you can look around, but get distracted. Just observe your hand movement. So you know your hand movement. But don't fixate your mind at your hand. Just acknowledge the movement. That's all you need. Don't need to know left hand, right hand. Okay, that's all concept. To know as a hand is in Buddhist term called concept already. It's a glob of body. That's all. <laughs> the body is moving. Okay, you know with your mind. So that's that's self awareness. You reflect on this movement. Acknowledge the movement. 
keep on doing that. So this is what the Buddha said, you will wear yourself external to this man movement. You wear yourself internally. You know that you're sitting, right? You're not falling, you're not dropping down, you're not leaning or sleeping. So that's how you wear yourself <coughs> externally and internally. You wear the hand movement as well as you know your body internally. So your proprioceptive sense. And when you sit, you know, right? You're not leaning left or right. You're in balance posture. So by doing that, I let you see the change in nature ongoing physically. And your physical phenomenon, like you move your hand. And so you're aware of it. You're rising. And let's start to see. So you, all of a sudden you become aware of your rising and ceasing of the physical phenomenon with the hand movement. Suppose I do it one movement, one section. So one minute I'm aware of myself 60 times. Instead of my mind is wandering around, not knowing myself. One minute, 60 times. One hour, 3,600 times. We're gonna do a half an hour, so you're gonna know yourself 1,800 times today, at least. How about that? <laughs> Aware of yourself, that's a lot. <laughs> you have an hour. So, isn't that wonderful? Come aware of this. It's not serious. Don't be serious. You're having fun. <laughs> <laughs> Meditation is about fun, not serious. When you see people doing that's not meditation. <laughs> you see that all the time, right? Some kind of master. Because he didn't like a student, but so it's not doing it. <laughs> so you can enjoy life and meditate. That's a real life, you know. You have to be able to meditate all day long. Not to be in the camp, like right now, in the camp. In real life, you're on the ring, you know, and you hit the, this thought, bad thoughts, good thoughts, loving thoughts. Good and bad is that ugly in Buddhist term because it distracts you. That's the, the ultimate term. Don't get it wrong. <laughs> it's a he thought it. Good and bad is the same. No, that's not the same. In terms of meditation, it has the same value. But in real life, it's different. Okay? Because it distracts you. You have to be back at the normal, not neutral feeling. Okay? So you keep doing that. So the inside has an end there. So you're aware of the physical change arising and ceasing of the physical phenomenon. So your body is just a body so to, to let you acknowledge, to be mindful, to be aware, to be attentive. So your body becomes a tool of your meditation. The body is just a body. No person, no being, no self. It's not yours or mine. It's just a body. So by seeing like that, you free yourself from craving and concept because you're in ultimate. You're not in the conceptual world. You're not clinging to anything in this world because your, your mind is right here. What are you talking about? I'm not clinging to anything. So that's how you end suffering through being aware of your body, at your body. So that's the first foundation. Very easy, right? So. Feeling is the same, very easy. Since, since you know your body. This is the variable of Hokkien that I have noticed this man. Who is illiterate? He said, observe your body, see mine. Isn't that? By doing this, you see your mind already, right? Because your mind knows it. Otherwise, you wouldn't be aware of it. Observe thoughts, see the truth. See the Dharma. Truth. Because thought wrap you around. By doing this, he said, when you're aware of your body, it awakens your body. Same awareness, when you're aware of your mind, it awakens your mind. So it catches your thoughts. When you see the action, you see the ultimate. Because the Osini Wana, 
God will please you. And you see the action, like what you do, like what you do here, you, you come back to the basic, to the norm. But when you think, it starts catching it. It stops your thought. And observe changing nature to see the ultimate. Because the ultimate is still with, when you see the true nature of things, we're following the pre-universal master system, impermanent, like your body impermanent, your hair keep turning gray, your teeth get rotten, <laughs> you have to keep shower every day, <laughs> it's a smell, <laughs> unclean, and so on. So, that's impermanent, imperfect, because it's under stress all the time, you have to keep maintaining, keep changing all the time, so it's under stress, conflict, unsatisfactoriness. So it's impermanence, imperfect, and it makes you suffer. And uh, because it's under stress and conflict, unsatisfactory. And it's selfless in nature. That's the third nature of it. Because you can't call this body truly yours. That's what the Buddha inquire into his first five disciples. He says, is this body permanent? No, no sir. So this body, or this form, form includes like sight, sound, smell, taste, touch, thought, see. This body is impermanent, so you can you call it it's perfect or imperfect? It's imperfect. So this form or this body impermanent, imperfect. Can you call it yours? No, obviously not. Because it's yours, you say, don't get old, don't get sick, and don't die. No one wants to die, right? So, we can't control it. It's no true permanent self in Buddhist term. And this has been echoed by neuroscientists nowadays. They even say, in the process of knowing an object, we generate the sense of self in the act of knowing. So they admit that there's no self in there, and they look for over 100 years now, in this brain or everywhere in this body. They haven't found a self located in any part of your body. Isn't that amazing? Over 100 years, they're the most sophisticated tool try to find who is playing this puppet or muppet in there, but they haven't found it. So they try to locate it, haven't found it. Because it's not there, we generate it up. Which the Buddha says is, is, is not like that. It's, you have to contact to the sixth sense sphere, eye, your nose, tongue, body, and mind. Like say, see sight, sound, smell, taste, touch, thought. By contact alone, it doesn't give you anything. You have to have eye consciousness, ear consciousness, nasal consciousness, tongue consciousness, body consciousness, and mind consciousness to be able to appreciate those things. So it has contact, has feelings, and then there is uh, perception. You know, this is a nice light, fluorescent light, I love that. Nice sound, beautiful music. But you already have bias there. It's a perception. There's, you have bias perception.